So India's biggest sale just got over. And if you are a beginner and you just purchased your first ever gaming laptop, here are five tasks that you must perform on your laptop to ensure the stability and longevity of your system. Guys, this channel is not just for reviews and recommendations. I genuinely want to educate new people coming into the world of high-end PCs so that you guys are not only able to make an informed decision but also you guys are able to diagnose issues on your own and learn how to deal with them. Alright, with that said, please hit the like button and definitely subscribe if you are new to the channel. Alright, let's get started. So, the first thing that I do whenever I log into a new Windows system is that I go into my connected Wi-Fi properties and turn on metered connection. This will stop all the background updates that Windows does automatically and also stop the background syncing and all. Now, there are many reasons to do this, but the main reason that I do this is that I do not want any unnecessary Windows or system updates that has been pushed by the manufacturer. The reason is I just took out the laptop from my, from my bag or from my box, right? And I just started using it. I haven't even tested the system. So it's highly possible that out of the box, your system is already at the most perfect state possible with regards to battery life, with regards to performance. But then unknowingly an update gets installed or the BIOS gets updated or whatever, anything gets updated and it breaks the system and you don't even know what broke it. So here's my recommendation. Don't fix what's not broken. Only update your software or Windows or let's say update your BIOS only when you notice something is wrong or there is a critical bug in your uh, laptop and that has been officially stated by your uh, laptop manufacturer and they have released a critical software update or critical BIOS update, critical something, some sort of critical update on their website and they have stated that they are going to fix that bug. Only then update your system software or you know your BIOS. I have heard from comments from some people that HP had released a buggy BIOS update for the Victus with the Radeon RX 300M and that broke many systems. I'm not sure I cannot validate that because we haven't faced that issue because because we don't really tend to update our BIOS. I never, I never touch the BIOS of my system. I never update that. So yeah, please don't fix what's not broken. The other reasons to use meter connection is to reduce battery drain and also to reduce sudden high disk usage. Yes, guys, it may so happen that let's say you're playing game casually or worse. If you're like playing a game competitively and you're really into the game and all of a sudden your FPS starts dropping, your GPU usage starts dropping, your game starts becoming stuttery. This generally happens when the disk usage increases. Also, the high disk usage is typically triggered by these you know, sudden automatic Windows updates in the background. Few other changes that I make to any new laptop is that I go into Windows settings and go to the background app settings and I disable all the background. I do not want any pesky Windows apps eating resources in the background. And lastly, remove all the unnecessary bloatware from your system. If your manufacturer is pushing a lot of bloatware, remove them. Use the apps that are only critical and are required by you. Remove all the bloatware, especially softwares like McAfee antivirus. Remove that because that increases the CPU usage in the background and will drain your battery. All right, next up. What you can test is your battery life or you can test the performance. I tend to test the performance, so let's start with that. Now, for performance testing, how can you test your laptop's performance? How can you ensure the stability of your uh, system? How can you ensure you're getting good thermals and good performance and all that on your own? I had made a dedicated video on this about you know a couple of years ago. You can go uh, in my channel. I have linked down in the description and also in the cards. I have taught you how you can install the various monitoring tools to judge the performance to see the metrics and judge for yourself if the performance is good or not so you can go to that video very well made for beginners and will really help you go step by step uh, to install all these tools and then metric your performance from now on till forever so yeah go ahead and watch the video but in short if i tell you start with cpu testing start with cpu performance and thermals to do that, install softwares like Cinemage R23 and use its 10-minute multi-core thermal testing. Install softwares like Hardware Info 64 and run the test and monitor your temperatures in Hardware Info 64. If you don't install Hardware Info 64, you can use your uh, built-in manufacturer tools like Armory Crate, NitroSense, whatever. You can use those. But I recommend using Hardware Info 64 because you can see much more detail in that. You can see every clock's frequency. You can see the package power drawn. You can see the uh, temperature, the TI temperature, the junction temperatures, everything you can see in Hardware Info 64. So I recommend using Hardware Info 64 and running stress tests to see how much temperature is your uh, CPU sustaining, is it throttling or not, how much package power is your CPU drawing. 
Now, how can you judge whether your CPU is overheating or not? You can have different types of CPUs with different thermal characteristics. Now, for this, you definitely have to know a little bit about the characteristics of your CPU. For example, a Ryzen 5 4600H will draw 50 to 55 watts of power in Cinemage R23 multicore for short term and then for long term test, it will drop down to 45 watts and it will not throttle until it hits 100 degrees centigrade. So this may sound very high to you, but these processes are made in such a way that it will sustain those high temperatures. And guys, it's 2022. If you are having a high-end laptop in a small form factor and you are having these high-end CPUs, which pack so much performance, like these CPUs are comparable to last year's desktop processors. So these are made to sustain high-end temperatures. So don't freak out when you see 95 degrees centigrade, which is very common these days. Also, while running these thermal tests, make sure your laptop has enough breathing room. The bottom of your laptop must be raised slightly so that there is enough air or enough ventilation for the bottom vents to pull in air. Also, the temperatures will depend on the fan speed of your laptop. Remember guys, when you have two laptops, you cannot compare the temperatures of both of them if one laptop is much more silent than the other. Fan speeds will affect your thermals greatly. For example, an HP Pavilion on an HP Victus, when you run a Cinemage R23 run, what I have observed is that those like laptops from HP tend to stay as quiet or as silent as possible without throttling. So it will try to stay silent, it will not ramp up the fans as long as the CPU doesn't hit like 92 degrees centigrade. The fans don't ramp up. So the system try, tries to stay as quiet as possible without throttling. So this is the characteristics of HP laptop uh, that you will tend to see. So don't freak out the temperatures are going high. That's because your fans are not really spinning that hard. So then you go into HP Victor's you know, Omen software and then you uh, enable max fans. So in HP Victor's you can enable max, max fans. And when you enable max fans, you will see the temperatures will drop drastically. I've shown you all the performance numbers in my HP Victor's review. I have shown you when you enable max fans, the temperatures drop significantly. So these are characteristics of your laptops, guys. Uh, some laptops have maximum fan options, some don't. Okay, next up, if you're still uncomfortable with the temperatures of your laptop for some reason, then try to use the different power profiles. Many laptops these days come with different power profiles that is pre-configured from the manufacturer. Different power profiles that will draw a different amount of power or let's say the fan speed will increase. So use those. Try to use balanced profile. Try to use silent profile to see how much performance are you losing and whether the performance loss is worth the temperature drop or it is worth the more silent uh, functioning of your laptop. So those things will depend. And if you don't have those tools, then I have a better idea for you. This is what I do. So, so use softwares like Protostop for Intel laptops and use softwares like Ryzen controller for Ryzen laptop. In fact, I actually prefer using these softwares over the uh, you know pre-configured settings that are provided by your manufacturer. That's because tools like Protostop and Ryzen controller will give you a much greater degree of control to customize the system's performance. So for example, for, with Throttlestop, you can undervolt your system, which is incredible feature that is available for Intel laptops. I have been using Throttlestop on my Intel laptop ever since I took it out of the box way back in October 20, 2018. So I've been using Throttlestop every day for the last four years on my Helios 300 2018. In fact, my undervolted i5-8300H will beat an i5-9300H and keeps up very well with an i5 10300H. That is the power of undervolting. Whereas with Ryzen controller, you cannot undervolt. That feature is not yet available for Ryzen laptops. But Ryzen controller is very beginner friendly. All you have to do is install the software, open the software and input a thermal throttling temperature that you like. So let's say you, you won't like your laptop to go above 90 degrees centigrade. So just put 90 degrees centigrade and apply the setting. And then your laptop system will automatically behave accordingly to keep the temperature below 90 degrees centigrade every time you do anything. So it will not go above 90 degrees centigrade 99% of the time. So that's a very easy to use software like Ryzen controller. So definitely, definitely recommend it. I have tutorial for both Thorostop and Ryzen controller on my channel. Again, the links are down in the description, also in the cards. Definitely go take a look at it. These are very powerful softwares to manage your Intel and Ryzen laptops. Now coming to GPU test. Now again, I have detailed information on GPU tests on that same video that I talked about earlier. Go and check that video out. Uh, again, I have shown you how to install the tools and all, of, all those things. For GPU tests, use softwares like, you know, 3 Mark or Unigen Heaven. These are GPU only tests and then you can use 
softwares like Hardware Info 64 to monitor the temperatures, the power draw, the GPU usage and all those things. Make sure the GPU usage in these GPU only benchmarks is at 97% and above. That's because these are GPU only benchmarks. So you have to make sure that your system is capable to use to fully utilize your GPU. Otherwise, what's the use? So make sure that in this GPU only benchmarks, the GPU percentage, the GPU usage is at maximum. 99% would be ideal. In terms of GPU temperatures, I know about NVIDIA. So NVIDIA states 87 degrees centigrade or below. Above 87 degrees centigrade, your GPU will throttle. If you find that your big GPU, like let's say you have a high end, let's say high wattage RTX 3060, RTX 3070, and that is like exceeding the 87 degrees centigrade temperature, you can actually undervolt your NVIDIA GPU using MSI Afterburner. That will help you reduce the GPU power and again the temperatures. So undervolting GPU in your you know system is also helpful. For example, I undervolted the GPU, the NVIDIA GTX 1660i 80 watts or in the MSI GF65 and that brought down the temperature by 5 degrees centigrade. So that's important. Now for games, try multiple games. Don't just try one game and then freak out that something is wrong. Try multiple games and also try GPU bound games. Games like Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Forza Horizon 4, Control and run benchmarks. Like run benchmarks at high settings. Make sure your GPU is touching 95% or 97% and above utilization in the GPU bound games. If your GPU is let's say at 70% usage in multiple games which are supposed to have GPU usage of 95-97% and you are getting like 70% or below, then there is some bottleneck on your system or some, some sort of issue. Whether your CPU is not able to keep up, your CPU is uh, getting like overheated or like let's say your CPU uh, is being used by some background process, your CPU utilization has reached 100% like by you, that's because some uh, unnecessary background process is using the CPU or let's say your disk usage has increased by some background process. So you have to check all these by going into the uh, task manager and seeing what is your CPU being used for. Is some background process using the CPU? Is some antivirus using the CPU? Or is some antivirus using some, using increasing the disk usage? So you have to check all these. How your RAM is getting filled up? So you have to check these uh, to, uh, to find out what's going wrong with the system. Why is the GPU not getting fully utilized? Why is the GPU getting underutilized? So make sure like, the ideal thing is that in any game, most games, your GPU utilization should be high compared to the CPU. So uh, that's one important point to keep in mind. All right, now moving on to battery life testing. Again, I have made a detailed video how to increase battery life of your gaming laptop. What are the steps that you must take? How to monitor and how to do the test? I have made a detailed video. Go and watch that. Uh, I'll explain in brief in this video. So first of all, open your manufacturer provided software that lets you see your battery health. Make sure your battery health is above 99%, so 99% or mostly 100%. If you don't have such a software, then use Hardware Info 64. Hardware Info 64 can also tell the uh, battery health most in most laptops. In some laptops, it cannot tell, but in other laptops, it can. And then perform the battery life test. So for battery life testing, I recommend you guys to first of all, bring your system to the absolute idle condition possible. And how can you judge idle condition? So open task manager and make sure that nothing is going on in the background. There is no background apps, uh, no high-end background apps working in the background. Clear everything. Make sure your CPU utilization is very low when in idle, like less than 4% ideally, like 4-5% like or below that. Make sure your CPU, your CPU utilization is very low. Then make sure your disk usage is very low, your Wi-Fi usage is very low, your dedicated GPU must be sleeping. It should be at 0% utilization. And then open something like Mozilla Firefox. I use Mozilla Firefox over Chrome because that I have observed that Mozilla Firefox increases battery life. The battery drain is much more severe with Chrome. So I use Mozilla Firefox and then open Hardware Info 64. Keep these two software open and then play a YouTube video in Mozilla Firefox and then observe the CPU package power in Hardware Info 64. Uh, make sure the CPU power package power is not absurdly high. Like for example, with the Ryzen 5 4600, if I remember correctly, the CPU package power when playing a background, like a YouTube video in the background is like uh, 4 5 watts or below that. So if you're having CPU package power of your Ryzen 5 4600H to be like 10 watts or something like that, then definitely something is wrong. Some background process is using your CPU and that is increasing its power draw. So these are this is the way you can diagnose your system. For example, I have seen a lot of people com complain in the comments that they are getting poor la battery life with these highly efficient Ryzen laptops with big battery. For example, something like Asus Victus. I find it very surprising. 
because in my optimized Windows uh, system, that is my HP Pavilion Gaming 15 EC1024X with 57 watt hour battery, I am able to manage six hours of YouTube playback, you know, doing the same test after two years of usage in the same laptop. So getting poor battery life, it's it's kind of it's kind of uh, surprising to me that you're getting poor battery life with this laptops like HP Victus. The HP Victus can manage 10 hours of battery life with a 70 watt hour battery. So if your system is getting poor battery life with, with especially a Ryzen system with big batteries, then it's definitely something is wrong. Some background process is using the battery. Some some software is messing things up. It is not the processor. So this is how you can diagnose the system and fix these things. You can also improve battery life by using softwares like Protostop and Ryzen controller. You can make dedicated profiles for battery life uh, in both. You can make undervolted profiles in Protostop by lowering the clock speeds. And you can also make dedicated profiles for battery life in Ryzen controller by lowering the uh, TDP of the CPU. You can put a Ryzen 5 4700H to not go above 15 watts. And then you can use your Ryzen laptop like an ultra book. So I have dedicated tutorials for everything on my channel. Links are down in the description. You can go and take a look at that. Apart from this, some good habits are like, try to make sure that your laptop is in dust free place because dust can be your biggest enemy. Dust will block the intake vents that your laptop pulls air from and it will also block the exhaust vents. And it will form a layer over the exhaust vents and that will cause crazy overheating. So make sure to keep your laptop in a dust free uh, place so that you know dust doesn't cause any trouble. But eventually dust will enter and so you know, after a few months, let's say six, seven months, your laptop will definitely start to overheat. And that's when you have to open it, clean the laptop out, you know, use a new paste to repaste your system using something good like Thermal Grease or Cryonaut for your Intel system. Or you can use something like GLIT GC Extreme on your Ryzen system to repaste the CPU and GPU and then, you know, continue using it. Repasting, guys, may sound uh, daunting, but it is not. It is really easy, guys, especially in these general purpose gaming laptops. It is very easy to do repasting i have tutorials on my channel you can go and take a look at those so you know after some months you eventually have to clean up the laptop you have to open the laptop and clean them so yeah don't be afraid do those things these are good for your laptop so that's it for this video guys these are some things that you can do to your laptop to first of all ensure that your laptop is performing well to diagnose its issues to fix them and you know in general get a knowledge of how these things perform how to how to find something is wrong with the system. I'm trying to educate you guys, uh, like, you know, so that you can, you are able to make an informed decision. You can understand the performing of your system at a greater level. So that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Comments, comment down your issues that you're facing. Let's have a discussion in the comments. And uh, yeah, if you're new to the channel, please hit the like button and also please subscribe. Let's reach 10,000 subscribers as soon as possible. That's it guys, take care and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.